Yeah, this night we are going to look at various techniques we are going to be using uh, in project management. And um, We'll be starting with um, work breakdown structure in project management. So work breakdown structure is a planning to the health project managers plan, define, organize their scope and break down the scope the project scope and the task into categories and the subcategories. We'll use work breakdown structure to break down our activities into a hierarchy in the hierarchy order, right, into categories and subcategories making it easier for us to, to manage our work, track our work. Looking at this diagram, this is a typical example of a work breakdown structure in a project environment. Looking at the project, um, uh, managing a project uh, end to end, uh, a full project life cycle. This is what this uh, diagram is showing. How we break this project down into stages. Now we have an initiate, the initiation stage, we have planning stage, we have execution stage, we have control stage, and we have closure stage. This is um, a full cycle. In my projects, I combine planning and um, um control as one so because when you you keep on planning and you keep on controlling your activity so but this is just an um a diagram to show you how a work a typical work breakdown structure looks like if you have um broken this project down into stages and sub stages and you have initiate stage under initiate stage you have appoint project manager and the project team member then you define the project goals then you give the customers buy-in and assess feasibility then under planning you have risk analysis you create schedules and the task plan. You set budget goal, establish communication process, and it continues like that within other stages. This is um, among the first thing we do in project management when we are starting. It will help us to know our scope, know which activities that comes under every stage. So we don't mix up. If we don't break this project down this way, you find out that um, some people will start documenting lesson learned on the initiate stage. And some people will start documenting project report on that planning. But when you break it down now like this, and under each shadow, under each stage you list it, it's very clear. Everybody can manage the anybody can. When this project is looking like this, it's very it's very easy for anyone, whether you have good um, uh, knowledge of project management, with what we are seeing here in this diagram, anybody can manage this project. So that's what we, we do in project breakdown structure. I'll go to other, um, other techniques 
but we'll come back to this project breakdown structure and look at it more how to use some of these uh, tools like uh, lucid charts and uh, draw.io on the visuals some of these drawing softwares how we can use it to create this kind of breakdown structure we'll come back to this because this is going to be one of your assignments you are going to replicate this picture you are seeing here but I, I need to give you guys a clue on how to do that so that's why we're coming back so let's continue to other method or techniques then you have a critical path method. Critical path is a method of a modeling project where you impute all necessary factors involved in your project and output the ultimate timeline for completing it. Factors to impute in your model include timeline, tax dependencies, milestones, deliverables, deadline uh, set by the client or the uh, key stakeholder. So what the critical part, it helps you to look at the critical areas you need to um, focus within the project, like the timeline. Each stage you can see here, we've got a critical part. Under installation, you have a critical part here. You see, you have a timeline that you need to focus. You have 20 days to do this uh, installation under this diagram. Looking at this diagram, you, have, you can see various critical parts here. These critical parts are like, you see timeline, and you see um, dependencies, you see milestones, Looking at this, um, this is a implement a budget pro. The time, actually you can create this timeline using a, a Microsoft uh, planner, Microsoft project plan, planner or project labor. You can use it to create this, uh, a timeline. This is a, another name for this time. Where the critical part is, um, can call it a project plan, just simply project plan. But what we are trying to say here is that this helps you to identify the critical areas within this uh, project. It's very good to help you focus on critical parts. Like here, we have 20 days to do this installation. And every deliverable have a timeline. So they are critical. So if you miss a timeline, then you are going to be in trouble because where are you going to get every where are you going to get time to complete? So you are if you are missing a timeline, you are borrowing a time from other projects, and from there you can see that your project starts struggling. So you focus on all this timeline to make sure that your project is moving very well. When you start missing any of this timeline, you see you are in trouble. Then you have dependencies. You find out that if uh, under these dependencies, you, you need to finish installation before testing, then this is timeline. So you have to make sure that you complete, you can start, um, uh, in uh, testing without finishing installation. These are critical parts and uh, milestone. So you find out that once you perform server um, stress test, then you've come to this, the end of this installation, which you can term as uh, the installation is complete, which is uh, a milestone within this installation stage. So this is what critical part helps you to focus on um, deadlines. 
to make sure that your project moves very well. So that's all about critical parts. And uh, you, it's, it's a simple project plan uh, in project management. So this is uh, the, one of the simplest way to, is equally a project, is equally a breakdown structure, you know, but you give it different name. It's a breakdown structure because you can see breaking these projects into so many categories and the subcategories. So that's timeline. All these things uh, just work together and uh, the names is different numbers. You're just trying to, to paint different pictures about it. But if you look at this very well breakdown structure and the timeline, uh, critical part, it's almost the same thing. It, it drives towards the same solution. And even the GAN chart, they're all the same thing, just uh, names. We look at this is gun chart another method this is the gun chart it help you to equally track your project and you can see is within this um, critical part which is still breakdown structure it helps you to track the main objective of all these things all this uh, method and the diagram is to help you break your project down and track it and monitor it looking at the deadly uh, factors like times and dependencies within this project so that is um, what these uh, techniques and diagrams do this is mainly like this particular method is mainly used in waterfall, it's mainly used in waterfall where dependencies are very, very critical. Because in waterfall, you cannot go to the next um, uh, stage without finishing the first, you can't go to second stage without finishing the first stage. So you keep on uh, building like that to finish the project. So a GAN chart is a tool for planning and scheduling a project. Timelines and tasks are converted into a horizontal bar chart, showing start and end a date, dependencies, scheduling, and the deadline. It shows how much of the task is completed per stage and who is uh, the task owner. So this is the um gun charts so when we are going to be treating project management tools you are going to see how this gun chart all this gun chart work and this uh, critical part work because we are going to uh, keep our hands dirty at some point we are going to be doing this practical we are going to be creating, uh, producing uh, a work like this using a um, project labor to create uh, a, a critical part and a gun chart. So that's what we'll be doing. But for now, it's the main thing for you to understand that you can, these are techniques you can use to manage and track your projects, breaking them down and then managing them into smaller stages and tracking the time and the resources. Here you can see the duration, the start and finish. And as you move forward, you can see even the costing will start appearing. When you move this gun chart, a bit uh, towards the right hand, you see that there is a, a space where you can start um, managing the cost of all these deliverable, all these tasks, all these activities. 
you manage how much it takes to do all these things. Just like I was saying that when you are going to be creating a project plan, you should be able to manage your project within one software where you track the time, the, the, the start and finish, and, uh, and I allocate resources, who is doing the job and how much is taking to do the job. And you can then track it, baseline and track it. And all these features will show helping you to track your project very well. So, but mainly this is within waterfall environment. So we are going to treat waterfall and agile environment very soon. So we have Scrum. It's another technique of managing projects is Scrum. This Scrum is not within waterfall environment. This is now within agile environment. This is the, the most popular project management approach and techniques within the agile environment and even within the industry now because every company is adapting is adopting this uh, agile scroll. Most companies now are, are migrating. So like uh, I joined I joined a new company and one of the things we are doing now is migrating from waterfall to to agile that's what we are doing at the moment so this scrum is a framework with which we manage complex projects through productively and creatively delivering product of the highest possible value Scrum help us to manage complex projects. What do you mean by complex projects? Complex projects are some of these projects you undertake, you dive into the project, but you can't really visualize how that project is going to end. These are complex projects. What are the type of this uh, complex project? Software development. Software is a complex project, very complex. Because when you start in a software, when you start developing a software, you will know, you cannot really see how that software is going to end, how many features that software is going to have. You keep on developing and keep on adding features and that's it. But to have simple projects, which you can use waterfall to manage. What are those uh, simple projects? Constructing a house is a very simple project. When you design it, you know how the house is going to look like. You know, if you are building um, a five bedroom duplex, you know that once you, you put the roof, that is how that uh, the house. One thing I don't like is you intentionally putting your uh, disturbing others. That is not good. So, what? Like I said, simple projects are simple projects. You know how from the beginning, you know how that project outcome is going to be, the, the outcome of that project is going to look like. As we have, as we know now, like complex projects, you see um, Facebook as a software. Up to date, we don't know how Facebook is going to end. We keep seeing more features every day. Every day you wake up, you see another feature. 
they keep on adding features. We don't know how it's going to end. So, and these are complex projects. So these are where Scrum comes. Scrum will help you to build this complex project by developing small, small features. Every day, every week, you develop a small feature. Every, you call it sprint. Every day, every two to two weeks, between two weeks to one month, you develop a feature and add. You keep on developing small feature, you add. You small feature, you add. You, you don't know what you are going to develop tomorrow. It's based on what the customers want, their reaction. So most of the things we are seeing in Facebook is based on our comments, our reaction, and they see what we need through our uh, our custom, through the customer journey. Customer journey is the way we interact with the, 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 the software, our reviews, and a lot of them, they know the way we feel about and then they develop another feature that will help us to be happy using that product. So within Agile, within Scrum, we have a Scrum master who foster an environment. The Scrum master is the person that uh, creates, uh, manage a good uh, project management atmosphere in order to, to work and deliver these small, small uh, features. And then we have a product owner. The product owner orders the work for a complex problem into a product backlog. So the product owner is the person that gather the feature that need to be added or to be developed within the product or within the software. As Facebook is now, the product owner is the CEO, <coughs> Mark. He gathers a uh, small um, features, looking at what the, from the customers, from the uh, stakeholders, looking at their demand, looking at the, the product vision. What do they intend to achieve? What is the business goal? They look at the business goal and look at customers' demand, customers' uh, complaint, and customers' review. From there, they understand what the customer and the, the stakeholders want. And then they come up with a feature to develop. And then they break that feature into user stories called product backlog. And then the development team will start working on that. So the product owner actually owns that particular product. Owning the product means you've got the power to decide which feature that should be produced and manage it to make sure that uh, customers and the stakeholders are satisfied. And the Scrum Master manages, make sure that this goal is achieved. This particular feature that the product owner introduced is achieved by promoting a healthy and project management environment for the development team to work on. The Scrum team turns a selection of the work into an increment of value during a sprint. During a sprint. When the product backlog have introduced a feature to, 
to be produced. Then the Scrum team, the Scrum team is made up of the product owner, the Scrum master, and the development team. The development team, which now they call the developers, are made up of the programmers, business analysts, testers, and the rest of them. These are the developers. So be, as a business analyst working in a Scrum environment, you are a developer. Because you are the design, the designer, you design the solution, and then you help them refining the solution, monitor what they are doing, test what they are doing, and then make sure that what they are producing meets the requirement specification that you, the business analyst, designed. That's how it works. The Scrum team and its stakeholders inspect the results of the, the work produced during the a, a sprint period, which is uh, between two weeks to uh, one month period. So after, when the sprint uh, starts, every two weeks to one month, you must produce one feature. And that feature you produce, at the end of that one week, you invite the stakeholders to come and see what you have produced. And that's what we call the sprint demo. So this is in a nutshell because we are going to treat Agile as a big uh, topic in this uh, uh, project management model. Because most of the things we are going to be doing are implementing our projects, even after this um, uh, training, is going to be based on Agile environment, which is Scrum. So looking at this picture, here is the, the product owner. The product owner gets input from the end users, customers, teams, and others, and the stakeholders. And when the product owner gets this um, input and in, transforms those inputs into a backlog, the backlog is, you see, features, small, small features. We call them backlog. And when this backlog is created, this is the development team. They pick some features. They can pick one, two, three, and then break them here, and then work on it to, after planning, they come up with a sprint backlog. This sprint backlog are the tasks they are going to be working on to produce these features. They will collaborate and during this uh, sprint, uh, sprint environment or this sprint duration. Sprint is a period of time to, to perform these tasks. And then within that period, they generate and create one feature. After testing that feature, the feature will be um, reviewed by the stakeholders. And after reviewing and the stakeholders are happy, they will deploy the feature. That is the increment. And then they will come as a team. They have a meeting called Sprint Retrospective to kind of uh, lesson learn, to look at in house what have they been doing wrong, what have they been within what they've done, the, the last sprint they, they performed, what did they get right and what they get wrong. And then they correct their mistakes. And then they come back again and then pick another feature from here and develop. So and during this period of one to four weeks, they, every day they meet before they start their work. And that's what we call daily scrum or stand-up uh, event daily stand-up. 
this daily stand-up is a uh, 15 minutes where every team member will come and talk what the team member did yesterday and what the team member is planning to do that particular day and the challenges the team member is having. So you say a challenge so that everybody will know what is the impediment, what will stop them from achieving their goal within these four weeks. So if the challenge is not something they can solve as a team within this uh, 15 minutes, that impediment will be referred to stakeholder, to Scrum Master. Scrum Master will take it up from there to resolve the issue. So he's now here as the person resolving the issue, making sure that everything within this uh, uh, sprint environment and scrum environment is working very well. So and the product, the pro, the sprint, the, the the team keep on refining their product backlog, refining it, making sure that. Um, kind of uh, optimizing the requirement to make sure that the, the, the requirement reflects to what the customers want. So that is uh, Scrum, how Scrum work in a nutshell. It's a very big cost on its own, but it's very easy. So, you have a certification that will call Scrum Product Owner. It's a big certification and it's a big role. So like me currently now, what I'm doing in my company now, I'm working as a product owner. So I work alias with the stakeholders to get um, product backlog. We have another um, course we'll call the Scrum Master is certification is a big role as well. So you can be a certified Scrum Master, you can be a certified product owner, and these are big, big jobs within the industry. That one can even become a Scrum, like in Scrum or in Agile environment, there is nothing like, um, there is nothing like project manager. So some people use this Scrum Master as a project manager, and some people use this um, product owner as a pro uh, project manager, but mainly Scrum Master is the project manager. But the product owner owns the product everybody works on. So the, everybody works on that product owner. The product owner gives direction on how that product, product is going to be managed. And the school master is making sure that every everything there is harmony, there is peace, and making sure that you people achieve your aim. Oh. So that is um, Scrum in a nutshell. We're not going to waste much time on Scrum because we're going to see it this sprint very soon. Yes, Kenneth, uh, Mokuro. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Charles. Good evening, everybody. Mm -hmm. I actually wanted to find out um, and so beyond, so the scrum, the scrum, the scrum master obviously should have a good knowledge, understanding of project management um, to 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 to, to, us to make him be more efficient or effective in his job. Would, would that be the case? Yeah, you can't be a scrum master without uh, having a knowledge of the project management. It's not possible. How can you be a scrum master without? Scrum is a project, Agile is a project management. Agile will have a different type of project management methodology. Waterfall is one, Agile methodology is one. So Scrum Master, like I said, 
is more like a project manager within Agile. They don't call it, it's just a change of name. But in the, in the, the real sense of it, a Scrum Master is a project manager in Agile methodology. But in Agile methodology, you cannot hear anything like project manager, you know? So that is the way it works in Agile, but it's a project management. So like what, well, because you're asking, can it, it's cool, you need to have a, a knowledge of its project. Agile is a project management methodology. So you need to have, um, being a scrum master means that you are a project manager. So, if you want to be recognized, highly recognized, like after this course, you already know what the project manager, the scrum master does, what they are, uh, everything they can do. And uh, you can even work as a scrum master. A lot of, I know a lot of people working as a scrum master, but they don't have certification. You know, but some companies were always stressing the need a certified scrum master. But once you understand it, you can work as a, as a scrum master, but that is the certificate, a, a global recognized certification is, uh, for, for you to uh, practice as a scrum master is to be certified scrum master. You write the scrum master certification exam and pass. Uh, Scrum.org is a very good, uh, is a very good uh, uh, institute for issuing out uh, school master certification exam and uh, certificate. Yeah, I see raising your hand. I just wanted to add another, like a follow-on question. I, I heard, I heard when you said that the Scrum master um, uh, works under the products owner. And so I'm just wondering, um, obviously the Scrum master needs to understand project management itself. But my question now will be, or the follow on question will be, can he, how, how, able, how, how easy is it that the Scrum master can actually make changes in terms of processes? I, I'm seeing the, the view graph that you have on, this, on the screen. The processes go back, go forward, and those sort of things. How easy, how easily is it for him to be able to change, you know, some of the processes, make some 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 modifications, and probably, probably persuade the team, the developers, to accept his uh, uh, modifications and and um, uh, or maybe maybe some of the changes that that he wants to bring on board. The Scrum Master doesn't make changes. So it's only the product owner that uh, have power to make changes in Scrum environment. The only thing the Scrum Master does is to make sure that you work within the acceptable standard to produce whatever the product owner wants within these four weeks. You help to educate the project team about Scrum, how to work in Scrum environment. Because you find out that so many pro, um, developers, they don't know how to, they don't understand, some of them might not even understand how Scrum work. So it's the duty of the Scrum Master to teach them how Scrum work, making sure that they observe all the Scrum events by having their daily standoff by having their sprint review, by having their sprint retrospective, and making sure that during the sprint um, planning, there is a time duration, they, they, they observe the time. So you may help them to be, you organize them, you help them to solve their problem. But in terms of the actual product requirements, the Scrum Master don't make changes. The only person that can make change is the product owner. The product owner have the right to even cancel the project, which is ongoing, because he owns the, pro, the he's the owner. Whatever he says is the final. 
even the stakeholders doesn't have power over product owner because he has been given that power as the product owner. So that is, if, if, the only way is you can sack the product, but as long as you want to, 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 to observe the, 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 the scrum, then everybody needs to respect the decision of the product owner. So that's how scrum work. But the scrum master work with the product owner. Scrum master is helping the product owner to make sure that the product owner's aim and objective is realized by helping to track the, making sure that the project within these four weeks, you produce this piece of uh, software that you guys are working on, but not to make any change. You are there to organize and lead. Have I answered your question? Yes, yes, you have. Yes, you have. So to, to clarify you more, I encourage you to download, which um okay, what are we telling you? Download the uh, go to scrum.org and download the scrum guide. It's like uh, I don't think it's up to 20 pages, and you read it. Is a um, compulsory that every every one of you should have a copy of Scrum Guide and read it. It's very is is not voluminous. You can even finish it within one day. It's going to open your eyes about about Scrum, uh, Scrum framework, how Scrum works, the role everybody plays within Scrum. You know. So that is um, that is it about um, Scrum for now. It's going to be part of our big picture in this uh, program. So let us not waste time and do other things. So, but to understand it more, uh, it's, it's an assignment that you go and download Scrum.org and uh, read it up. Now we have a Kanban, Kanban um, techniques. Kanban is a project management tool that gives more visual overview of the tasks that either need to get done or are complete. It consists of three columns, physical or digital board, and the columns are to do in progress and done. So that's how Kanban is mainly giving you uh, a visual representation of how your project is moving. You know where every deliverable are and who is working on that deliverable. So this is um, how they come back. This is an, uh, a picture from um, a Jira, a Jira software where we do manage uh, software development and uh, bug tracking. So this is the Kanban board. Under the Kanban board, you can see you have here to do. These are what you are going to be doing. This is all to do is where you list the product backlog. And this product backlog from here, the developers will be picking what they are going to be working on from this backlog. And everyone, anyone they pick, they bring it <coughs> into the next stage, which is work in progress. So, and after work in progress, they bring it to done. But in this board, you have the capacity to create more columns where you can create as many as you want, even in Jira. So, which me on my, during my, if I do my own, I'll create testing. And instead of a three board, originally Kanban started with three board but you keep on modification, people add more 
depending on what they need. So me, I add testing where when I pick a work from to do, I bring it into work in progress and I'll be working on it. Once I finish the work, I'll bring it to testing for the QA or the uh, testers to test or the business analysts. Business analysts can equally do testing. So do the testing and after the testing, and then they'll bring it to done. And one is now in a to done, it means that you finish that particular task or that particular backlog you is completed. You put it here. And that's how you do till you finish whatever you are doing. And then you call um, stakeholders to come and see what you've done on that Scrum demo. So, so all these things, Kanban and Scrum, all, all these things, you can use Kanba, Kanban um, within Scrum environment. So all these techniques, they can work together. The Scrum is a, is a technique and equally uh, a framework. So, so this is the Kanban, how it looks like. You can equally do your Kanban board in, um, in a table or in a physical board, just like this. This is the physical board where you can um, use uh, sticky notes to write what to do. This is how it started. It started from this analog way till now some developers turn it into a software. But this is how Kanban started. You write what you want in a sticky note, what needs to be do and place it. And then the developer will pick the sticky note and bring it in progress. When they finish with that, they will then bring it to the. So this is a physical Kanban, but a lot of people are still using it. Yeah, so that is how Kanban board works. So quickly, uh, let's do this. Um, do you have any other question before we go to um, do some little practical in uh, work breakdown structure? Okay. And this is what we are going to, this work breakdown structure. I will give, I'm not going to produce this. But what I'll do is that I will start it and so you see how to use the software to do it because it's going to be an assignment. So you need to do, struggle to do some work and that's how you learn. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a, a, a start and then you see how I start doing it and then you complete the rest of the work. So to do this you can use a uh, lucid charts. Lucid charts. So Lucid Charts is a software. This is Lucid Charts. Can you use Lucid Chart to do this? So once you want you want to use, you can create a new a blank canvas and start creating what you want to do. So create black canvas. So you you have a lot of um, when you want to start, you also tell you to 
is a premium and a free version software. So you can start and then ask you to oh, yeah. up, up, upgrade. But you can start by clicking uh, start uh, Lucy Chat prior and you start um, using it to create uh, whatever you want to to create. This is how to start less and they've got a lot of templates but most of the templates here is they are paid template they are premium templates so if you want to use the templates you actually need to pay some of the templates some of them are free they have free templates and uh, so many of them are free so let's say you want to create uh, this um what breakdown structure using the template? Just so you can see these are templates. You see what breakdown structure templates, but you can see they are premium. They need to pay. But as someone who is starting in um, a career in IT, once you start with using templates, it's going to be difficult for you to learn this very well. So I encourage you to start from the scratch and learn how to because all these templates people created it and they are not that so difficult if you learn how to do it so this is lucid charts you can come here and do it you don't have time to start doing it I will do it in lucid chat and we'll do it in uh, other software i'll go to draw.io where i will do some practical why I like do using draw.io is that because everything in draw.io is 100% free. It doesn't have premium, so I, I lie because students are times complain they can't uh, subscribe. So we have free, 100% free software, which is a complete clone of uh, Microsoft VC you can use to do your job as a business analyst and the project manager. So once you type draw.io, this is draw.io. <clears throat> it will bring out this kind of um, page or interface and ask you if you have an existing diagram you can open it from here but if you don't have an existing you can create a new diagram and there's how so there's a lot of templates here if you want to use the template then you can select any kind of templates you want to use. Is it a um, flow chart? Is it a swim lane? All these things are going to like going to mainly when you start a business analysis because this should be the second uh, best friend to business analysis. Because most of the things they do, they design a lot. So you can use them, but here. Like I can say I'm not going to be dwelling so much on templates. Less, uh, I'll be encouraging you to do most of your, your work um, using um, black canvas. Use black black canvas and uh, you create a CS. So this is a black canvas. So, and 
this is where we are going to do the work breakdown structure. So if I should encourage you, if you want to do it, you can even, I'm going to send the picture, but for you to do it, I uh, will encourage you, you draw a picture of, in, a, in a, a sheet of paper, draw your work breakdown structure down in the piece of, before you start uh, designing it, yeah, it's going to be easier that way. Or you can be looking at the picture and be, but the best way is to have a rough diagram on a sheet of paper before you start the <clears throat> drawing with this um, software. So let's see, we want to do this. Now, from these um, shapes, you pick up but one of these like this and bring it down here. And then if we have a line here, we can pick the line and uh, like this. Then we can um, pick another line and uh, bring it So I'll bring another sh another rectangular shape here. You can duplicate it. You right click and duplicate and bring it here. You can right click again and duplicate and bring it here and then this one you connect this You connect it and then from here you can actually draw this line so I've bend the line on this one and then bend the line you can see i'm beginning to get our work breakdown structure so and then this can be So these are stages. And this is work breakdown structure. And then under these, you 
can pick another line. Connect it. And then bring another one. And then so So you can see I've started building subcategories under this initiate stage. And then when I finish the subcategories, I'll come and start building subcategories under this. And I'll start building subcategories under this. And then I'll color this. And uh, I'll color that and then I'll color this. So, and that is it. And um, on the initial stage, say, kick. Yeah, that's on the initial stage of a project. You start with a kickoff meeting, and that's how you'll be doing it and doing it, and that's how you're breaking your work into smaller, smaller this thing. And then when you finish building it this way, designing it this way, the next thing you have to do is to export your work to your line manager for validation. And to do that, you come to file, click on file, go under exports. It's better to export your work in PNG because the PNG document is very, very, is portable document, piece of portable. Portable, it can fit into any document can integrate it in a, either a word document or even in excel or even in a powerpoint document so that's why it's very good to export your work in png other than in pdf or other these things so you select png and then you can put the starting by just for me, you don't need to just say export. And when you say export like this, then what do you do? You download. You download it. And I've downloaded it. And now in my uh, my computer, I will open it now. And that's it. Let me show this work I've uh, downloaded.
Yeah, this is the work that I've just downloaded here. So after doing that, you download your work and that is it. I see here is cut off and here is cut off. So we can add a border to avoid this. But well, that's how you can create your work breakdown structure from the scratch using um, draw.io. So I'm not going to finish this work because it's an assignment. If I finish it, you won't be able to do any work again. So any question? Do you have any question on this? Okay, very good. And um, this will bring us to the end of this um, tonight's live uh, class. Tomorrow we are going to look at the project management methodologies. We'll, tomorrow we'll look at various methodologies like waterfall, agile methodology, and the rest of them. So that's it. So I wish you a good night rest. And um, I'm going to explain um upload the assignment to the course portal from there you can download and work on it and submit and so many of you are not taking this assignment seriously it's only one person a saucer uh, it's only one person that actually um submitted her work i submitted my own today okay i've uh logged in yeah but it's good you take your work serious if you really want to progress in this your career you do it a practical um good night everyone <laughs>